going everyone? Now, yep. we're going to continue this series on uh, Rockola 480 Technica. Today we're going to start troubleshooting some things out and getting everything working on it. Uh, last video you seen, uh, we did get the, the mech is working, but our keypad wasn't working. Um, I do have some of it working now. Uh, remember before we didn't have anything. Well now we do. Uh, our one and our two work. No three. Uh, no five. And six works. One, two, four, and six does work. And we'll wait for that to go over. And I'll cancel it. If you didn't know on these, back here by the volume control, this button right here is a cancel button. That's how you can cancel out a record. So we do have some of them working. One, two, four, six. Uh, I know our reset's not working. Uh, let's see. Seven. 8, 9 is working, and our 0 isn't working. So we do have some of our keypad working. Uh, and so we still have to address this, which most of it is going to be, I think we still have just a dirty, dirty keypad. If we'd come around, make a selection. And cancel it out. Okay, and as you can see, our location top hits microcomputed is working. 126, 192. And when I took the hit tracker off, I went ahead and put a new battery in it. It's kind of hard to see it. But it's in there. Uh, what I did was I just replaced it with a 20, 2032. I've got a socket, soldered a socket in it, and just put a 2032 in it because that's not a rechargeable. Those ones do have to be replaced. Uh, the battery that was in it is not a rechargeable either. And you can see we already made two selections, so our hit tracker time selected two. Now what I did to get our keypad working, I kind of got a kind of jumping back and forth here a little bit. As you can see, we're still stuck on uh, free play. Usually when these are set up for free play, they just run up to 99 credits and never move from there. Uh, I thought we had a big problem with our man, it's awful dark. Oh well, I thought we were having a, well we were having a problem with our profit setter. Um, I went over it a couple of times, I pulled all the chips, cleaned all the chips, and still ended up with the same thing. But what I did was I got to thinking, you know, everything was working, our our readouts working, it was reading down here when the, when the carriage is running, it would count them off here. So I knew that was working and some part of our uh, profit setter was working. Well, I could move the dip switches but it would still stay stuck on free play. So what I did was I just went through and I just rocked these back and forth about four or five times and then our keypads come up and started working. So it was in those dip switches, it's just from sitting so long that uh, we had lost contact in our dip switches. And you know, that may be unrelated to the keypad working. Uh, I went through. Now, I'm looking for a wiring harness for this, for, from the hit track, from the, from the profit setter to our keypad and everything, as you can see. This was busted. 
and they have the wire the clamp just kind of strapped to the side of it and this one here they cut a slot in it and use the push on terminal to our push on to to make contact well that doesn't always make contact down here if you remember we had one of our pins come off one of our wires come off of our pins and I had fixed that before so that's why I said I'm looking for an, a new wiring harness but it may be that they're all like this they're all just so fragile from the heat and over the years but I still believe that we need to clean up our keypad even more before we can get all of our buttons to work so what we're going to do today is we're going to pull that keypad off and clean all them buttons up some more clean up all the contacts in it and see if we can't get all of them to work and then we can start putting some records in this and seeing how everything's going to work and sound okay and another thing we did when we we got the Mac working and we could get it to go to a record and get the record put it down and put it back but I'm, I'm always using 100 the first one the rack wasn't quite picking up the record it was off just a little bit uh, we were off this way with our with our rack out of adjustment it would grab the record most of the time other times it would kind of uh, not quite pick it up and it would fall off of the off of the arm and then when it went to put it back it would always it would put it back in our home position and not on our 100 so we I had to adjust the rack so the rack would be the arm would move over well the the rack would move this way towards us just a little bit and center up the arm now how I did that as remember this is the book for our 477 Max which is the exact same Mac and everything is uh, situated in, in the same place there's two different ways that you can adjust that number one is uh, the magazine stops sooner there's a little pot on our logic board which is right on the front of the right on the front of the Mac which is right there you can see that little blue pot you can adjust it there you can adjust that I adjusted that and I wasn't getting anywhere doing it this way it just uh, just wasn't it um, wouldn't move it enough so I put it back where it was and then the second option is you can see there's this screw on the side here where the, uh, the where that switch is and our little opto <laughs> now it's not an opto it's a little eye that um, locates where the wheel is and where the rack is okay now rotate the gnarled end of the magazine motor which is underneath um, the magazine that's that second motor that we put in and the gripper arm and at this point the opto LED should light up if this does not occur then you turn the, what you do is you reach under put this on off we'll turn the magazine off now there this second motor the one that uh, comes in from the bottom back here oh, where you at okay that drives our rack we'll have this same gnarled gear on the bottom that's so you can turn the motor manually now if I find it again ah, there it is but I need my other hand to turn it okay now that little LED light right there if you turn whoop, wrong way if you turn that gnarled wheel 
you can see the rack turns and what you do is you turn it oh man until there and you can see our light comes on and that's positioning the arm exactly where it needs to be now and if it's not if you press now let me I don't know if I'm explaining this well enough let me okay now if you press this first one that will go to one, that will start it off at 100. And if you, if you can shut it down quick enough, like so, now you can see, and it will pick it up like it should. But doing it this way, your keypad has to work. So, what I did, was I just looked right down on top here and I noticed in the home position that our rack was sitting about right in here we were off of almost one record to uh, well three quarters half to three quarters of a record off to home position now if you go over here this screw right down there if you turn him, we'll adjust this rack one way or the other. I think in my case, I think I tightened it clockwise and it moved our rack clockwise. No, if you turn it, I turned it counterclockwise and it moved our whole rack back a little bit. And that straightened that out and now it's aligned and it picks up the record and puts it back where it should. Uh, once we get everything all running and get a full records, we can look at it some more and make sure that it is doing it exactly the way we want. Right now, I got it adjusted so we can use it. And it may be dead on because from the looks of it, we are exactly centered where we should be. So, that was another thing I had done off camera because I was I just kind of was doing some things trying to get some things straightened out and figured out on this but we don't worry we still got plenty to do on this so let's pull that keypad off and get that cleaned up and see if we can get all of our numbers working Here's a prime example why our reset's not working. See if I can get you. There we are. We can get a pointer. And if you can see, you can see our nice, nice brass contact right there. And there should be one right there. But you can see it's all tarnished, corroded. We have to get that cleaned off in order for to make contact. Now there's two clips on either side of these buttons. There's one here and one here. I showed you in an early video when we were cleaning this up. I didn't pull them all because I didn't want to didn't want to bust it all up. Well we don't have a choice. You can see some of the tabs will break off when you're trying to pull these out and put them back in. As long as you have one tab on there, when you put the button on it and then put it up in the... 
put the button on it and then put it in the <coughs> excuse me in the panel it will hold that switch in place it's not going to fall and come out of there as long as you don't break two of them off break two of them off then you're kind of crap out of luck then you got to try and figure out something else to hold that button in there because they're spring loaded so let me get these cleaned up okay that looks a lot better doesn't it that's what that is is you have your your switch sits down in there on a spring the spring goes over that pin in the center and then there's a con there's little contacts on either side so when this slides down, when you push it down, it makes a contact between those two pins. Do, do, to do, do. Telling the machine that you just pushed reset or number, number five or number nine, whatever. And how I cleaned them, how I get in there and clean that up is that one that was really bad. First, I take a little screwdriver and I just kind of chip off all the real heavy hard stuff and then if you don't have one of these I suggest that you get one this is a light socket cleaning tool for pinball machines that end you use for cleaning the light sockets that ends flat so you, you can get right down in there right down on it and, and twist it on it and clean it up you can see it polishes it up really nice so now our reset button should be okay I'll get that put back together and then we'll I'll work on all of them I'm gonna pull them all again and check them all and see what they look like because I know I cleaned one and two really good because those two those are the only two that work for your first digit is either you have to have a one or a two side A and side B and none of these other ones will work as your first digit so I made sure those two were cleaned up so I knew if if we ended up fixing or getting it to work our one or our two would work so I know those two I don't have to check but the rest of these I do I'll have to pull all them again uh, and see if they if they're still dirty down in there so let me get finished up here so we can get this back in and see if we can't get everything working. Okay, all cleaned up and put back in. And if you do you remember, I don't know if you remember or not, when we were cleaning this out, we found this bracket. I figured out where that goes. That bracket goes down there to support that door at the bottom. So when you're pushing on the buttons, it's not flexing. But now let's see what we got. And of course, uh, run up to 99 credits. Back to home. And let's see now if we press 1, 1. See what happens if we press reset. It resets. 1, 1, 100. Whoops. Huh. Okay, we still got one here that's not working. Our reset's working. Two's working. And I don't know why it went to 102. Oh, come on. Okay. One. Zero. Nope. Still no zero. Still no five either. And there should be should be some one fifties. Okay, so we got our five and our zeros not working. Four's working. Nine's working. Three's not working. And eight's not working. Two's working. 
Seven's working. And six is working. So what do we have? We have our threes. Okay. Three and eight, five and zero are not working. So we have these two rows. So now well, let's figure out what the hell is going on there. Let's first let's make sure our plug is seated. One. Oh, no three. Eight, five, or zero. Okay. So now let's see what we can find out why our three and our eight and our five and our zero are not working. That almost sounds like one wire is not connected. Okay, we have our keypad here. Now we know one and six works, two and seven work, and four and nine. It's three and eight, five and zero that are not working. These here. Now, what do these four have in common? Now if you flip this over, Here's number three. Here's number three. Here's our big pins. That's for our switch out front. Runs down to this line. This end goes up to a diode. Jumps over to here. We'll get to that in a minute. Here is your number eight. Comes in here and to our big pin. That's our contact out front. Runs to this line. And we come over here. Here's our zero down to a diode. And here's our push button from here to this line here. Here's our number five. C5. This is our contact out front to this line. Runs up to a diode. So all four of those connect to this line here, do, 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 all the way down to this pin, which is our connector, which is a yellow and brown wire. Now if we check these across those two, just to, for shits and giggles to, to see if our, see if I can get this, just to make sure our contact works. There's our meter. Let's see. Here and here. Gets kind of tough. Okay, where you at? Oh, wrong one. Three. Right there. Let's see. One, two be that one. And you can see our button's working. Okay. So we have our number three here. Runs up. Up to a diode. You can see here's our little diode mark here. If we test our diode. If I can get you in there. Let me I'll back you off just just enough. Okay, here's number three. We'll test our diode. See no juice going one way. Am I hitting the right one? Oh heck no. There we go. See, 0.63, which is good for a diode. Anything under 7. And we shouldn't have any juice going back the other way, which we don't. And I tested all the diodes for those four. All the diodes are good. Push buttons are all working. So, I traced it down to that, like I said, that yellow and brown wire which is one, one, two, three, fourth pin 
one, two, three, fourth pin. Uh, pins clean. And I'll get you off the stand and we'll go over to the go over to the jukebox. Okay, over here at the jukebox. Here's our connector for our pin pad, or pin pad, whatever you want to call it, our button pad. See, here's our yellow. Oh, where are you at? Here's our yellow and brown, which is one, two, three, our fourth pin. We'll stick our probe in the yellow and the brown, and then we'll come up to our profit setter which our yellow and brown is one two three four is the fifth one down or fourth one up and you can see we have uh, there we go and we have continuity through so our wire is good pin pad or the pin pad I want to keep calling it the pin pad now uh, the button pad switches are working line is good up to the profit setter so now, again, we're back to that stinking profit setter. And we'll take that back off and chase that yellow and brown and see what it connects to inside there and see if we have something broken or missing. Well, not missing, but broken or, or not any good. Be Ivan Nogudski. So let me get the profit setter back out of there again for about the tenth time. <laughs> uh, this is what you go through when you don't have schematics. Everything is different on this one as far as electronic wise goes than the 477. I don't have the books for this one so and no wiring diagram so this is going to be how you chase stuff down without a wiring without the schematics. So we'll pull that profit setter, check where this yellow and brown wire goes in and what it connects to inside on the circuit board and see if we can determine maybe we have a bad resistor or something on the profit setter. So again, let me pull that out. Okay, hello old friend. Haven't seen you for about an hour now. <laughs> ah. Should just have zippers on this thing. I could just unzip it on either side and take it off. I've had this thing off so many times and looked at it. Okay. Cover. Yay! Take the cover off. Okay. As you can see, uh, give me cover back. Keyboard. There's our keyboard pad right there. Okay. Number five pin. See if I can get you. There we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And looky there, it's even labeled for us down in there. Okay, now we need to pull this apart so we can see where our number, what our number five pin goes to. And to pull the, you can pull these top boards off. They're pretty, pretty slick. All you have to do is pull them up off of the through through the board connector or through the board pin. And I've cleaned every one of these pins on this. Okay. Set him off to the side for right now. Flip him over. Okay, and we should be... Okay, number one. <coughs> so we have... One, two, three, four, 
and 5 which that one doesn't look very good hmm let's see what we got should be okay here yep if you can hear. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's see, we're good there. So it goes through the board. Two. Looks like here. Two. Looks like that resistor. Let's see, five. Let's see, is it this one? Yep. Okay, yeah, I know you can't see my multimeter. Let me, oh. Okay, number five pin goes to this resistor. Now let's let's check that resistor. Should be that one right right there, which is a 97k, probably a hundred thousand. Okay, we can look him up. And there's one right up above it that has number five on it. Yep, and that's a hundred. It should all be a hundred K from the looks of it, from the looks of the bands. Yep, wait a minute. What do we got here? Point nine. That one is a little, that one's different, okay. Point nine and point nine. So those three are good. Okay, so here's here is our one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there it is. That's this one, right here, which is a point nine. Unless I'm measuring something else on the, which I shouldn't be. Let's 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 make sure. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And it should be one, two, third one up from the bottom. One, two, three, which is that one right there, which goes to, here's our number five pin here, which goes down to our bottom board. And we'll get to that here in a minute. Let's check out a few other things. I see a trace that runs right down through there. You can, comes off of here. Runs across, and looks like, is it picking up this, that one, or does it go underneath? See, that's where the schematics would be nice. Through now, these are all our resistors. There's a point nine, so it is going through. Doesn't look really. Yeah, those are all connected. Coming off. Let's see, we can just see the trace. into here 
can just see the trace through the board right there and connects here which will be those big guys which are not sure what those ones are I don't know if we can test them or not okay I did some more chasing and I brought had a lot of leads coming down to this chip right here and this is a upside down chip okay this is a DS 8664N and a lot of our leads come into this this chip for our display or for our keypad now I don't know if it has anything to do with our keypad or if it or not but we've got some collapsed pins and corroded pins in our socket Chief can see the these this side's pretty corroded and the other side where's my pointer <laughs> the other side uh, we have a couple good these two so these two pins are good here and so is that one these other ones are collapsed squished all the way in and you can see that some of them are connected so I'm going to change that socket out like I said I don't know if it really has anything to do with our keypad or not uh, without the schematics this is kind of just uh, what you have to do is just start inspecting things as much as possible and when you find things that aren't up to par you change them or clean it just like that just like your chips pull your chips and clean your legs uh, I did notice that some of our, our buttons down here weren't working yet the test button uh, the caps missing but it the button all it is is this contact on the top touches another little contact underneath so it, it you know it's okay it'll still work but the test didn't work uh, the only one that did work was our clear so I don't know if this but we're gonna change it so we know for sure whether we know it's good let me see where's our there's our notch you can see our little notch right right there right right there we have our notch that's where our notch on our chip goes in just like so so when I put the new socket in I want to make sure that our our little notch is over here I'm um, heating up my desolderer right at the moment, uh, and once I get it heated up, then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how I, now it's heated up. <laughs> this is a, the new new desolderer that I was talking about in one of my other videos that I really like for doing these. You know, the pump's okay, using one of these, you know but you just can't seem to get enough of them get enough of it yeah okay had to clean a big water solder out of my gun
Now what's the chances it'll come right up out of there? Slim to none, right? Yep. <laughs> See, I got a couple of them there. I need to take care of. No, there's always going to be a little bit of solder left clinging. Okay. Okay, now there's two different ways we can uh, get the, get that up out of there the rest of the way. Uh, we got almost all the solder off of the off of all of our pens you know there's gonna be a little bit of residue of solder clinging on a little bit holding that socket or chip in place in this case it's the socket what you can do is you can either just pry the plastic up off of here and then it'll leave all your pins and then you can just touch each one with your soldering gun and pull them out or if you want to do it all at once We'll take our little chip pulling tool and we'll get a hold of it. I'll bring you over here. You can see, I got it kind of supported underneath by my leg. And then we'll take our our heat gun, our rework gun. Wait for that to come up to temperature. You have to watch when you're using these heat guns. Uh, they'll heat up to to melt solder. Uh, I have this one set at I think 320. Wait till it heats up and I'll let you know. Uh, 
Yep, we're getting there. No, I do. I have this one set at 363, 363 degrees. Solder melts at, I think, right around 280 or 320 in that area. Don't quote me on that. I, I'm not real big on numbers. I just know what works best for me. And what we do is we just heat them up a little bit. Like I said, you got to watch using a, a rework station like this. If you let it sit in one spot too long, it will. And there's our our socket. I think we left a couple of pins in. We'll take a look here in a second. Flip them over. Yep, we've got a couple of them left, and those we can just, oops, sorry about that, we can touch, oh yeah, and see, where you at, okay, you can see we have a couple, a couple of those little pins left in there, but as I was saying, you don't want to leave that heat gun in one spot too long, or you will scorch, you will scorch the board. Trust me. Learn from experience. Now that socket has been professionally sucked off the board. Nice clean. Oh, I got one more left. I bet you you've seen it. Why didn't you tell me? Okay, now we can move back over here and get us a, a brand spanking new socket out. These are 24 pin. As you can see, I, I, I do buy a few of them at a time. <laughs> There's 60 of them here. Go big or go home. Alright. Now we'll get our new socket put in. Okay, after you get a couple of them, a couple of pins soldered, take your, so your notches in the right place, take and squeeze that socket up, and heat your solder joint back up. And 
that will suck it right down to the board. And just like that. Got a new socket. Let me check this under the magnifying glass. Got one that looks not too healthy. That's better. All right. There's that. There's our new socket. Take our chip. See, there's our notch there. Notch there. She's all ready to go. So hopefully that might take care of some of our problem. Uh, if it if it does, uh, well, we may have to do another one. We have another one of those right here. That's an MM5781. See the 5781. That one is working because that is the the EEPROM. The 82 is our processor. I was I did look those two up. This is the processor plus it does some other things. Same with this. There it's the RAM and, and EEPROM. It it these two are your main chips anyway. And neither one of them are available. I did find the 82 over in China. It was uh what the hell did they want for it? Uh, Fifteen dollars for that chip and four dollars shipping. This one, uh, yep, I did have a company uh, get back to me that uh, I can get that chip too as well. That one was seven dollars and sixty-five cents. Uh, I don't know what the shipping was. I didn't didn't ask them about the shipping because that's when um, I started doing a few other things on this board and we started getting our keypad to work. I had narrowed it down. I figured it was one of these two. It was either the processor. The one I was leaning more towards was the processor that it was uh, letting our readout but it wasn't processing you know any of the keypad. But now that some of the keypad is, miss is working uh, now, okay, well, that's the way it goes sometimes. So, let's, let's get this put back together and put it in just for shits and giggles and, and see what happens. Okay, got her back in again. Now, let's see what happens. Right. Resetting. 99 plays. Uh, gee, wonder why the add coin light doesn't come on. Got 99 plays, don't we need more? Okay, now. One. Three. Now three stuck. Now the three was working. One. Eight. Eight is working. One. Five, that's working. One, zero, zero. There she goes, picks it up, puts her on. I don't have any speakers hooked up, so I don't want it playing at all. I don't want to 
ruin that amp. Puts it back where it belongs, and boink, and goes back to the home position. And we still have 99 credits. Ooh, and look. Those are the ones that have played. And we've pissed with it four times. So guess what? Everything's working up here. Now we'll need to put our speaker panel back on and we'll check our check everything else. So we got lucky. <laughs> I guess. If you want to call it luck. And it was just kind of a narrowing it down to where where the lines come in and where they go to. And I think it kind of all boiled down to a to that bad socket. And once we changed out that socket, it started working. And I think I don't think it had anything to do with me pissing with those uh, the dip switches. Actually, I think it's from me plugging and unplugging those plugs and moving that chip on that bottom board a little bit and making contact at certain points and things would work a little bit. That's how I think we got our keypad working was just from me unplugging and plugging stuff back in it moved that chip around enough that it started it made contact and started working a keypad partially. I had pulled that chip out and cleaned it once before but I didn't inspect the socket well enough. But this time since we were having such problems I really inspected that socket when I pulled that chip because I narrowed it down traced it back to that chip controlling things for the keypad. And once, once I pulled the chip and started looking at it I could see that that socket was corroded. And once I figured that socket was corroded, and I could see down in there that some of the some of the pins were, or the latches, whatever you want to call the contacts, were collapsed. So I don't think we were making good enough contact on that chip. So once I changed that chip, then everything started working change that chip, change that socket for that chip, everything started working. So now, yeah, that makes me happy. feel good about it now. You know, it, it kind of makes you feel good once you work on something for a while and then you start running into these problems, you can start tracing them back and getting them fixed and once you do get them fixed, you start feeling, feel good about it. But this video has been very long. Uh, we got into quite a bit on this one. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I learned how to take that uh, profit tracker off about eight times and that keypad about 20. <laughs> so if you like the video, hit the like button. If you're new here and haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell and I'll give, bring you more of these great great videos of jukeboxes, pinball machines, and video arcade games. So until next time, see ya!